Thank you for joining us in this webinar where we will be talking about how we can use rubrics in Blackboard. Rubrics are helpful when you're grading in any environment because it increases communications with your students. From the beginning, you can clearly express to your students exactly what you are expecting them to accomplish in the assignment. Once it's been graded, the rubric provides excellent feedback to your students. As you're grading your assignments, you'll find that the rubric will help you stay consistent and objective. With this recent upgrade in Blackboard, you'll find that the rubrics are integrated into the Grade Center, making it easy to score as well as communicate those results back to your students. You can use the rubrics throughout the Blackboard environment. For example, when you create an assignment, there's a button that will allow you to launch the rubric tool. If you're choosing to grade items such as discussion boards, blogs, wikis, and journals, this rubric tool is also available. For Safe Assign, you will need to go through the Grade Center to assign a rubric. In fact, you can assign a rubric to any Grade Center item. Let's go ahead and take a look at Blackboard and how we can create and use a rubric. I'm going to first show you how you can access the rubric tool from a gradable item. In this case, I'm going to first go to Assignments. From within the Assignments area, I'm going to go up to the gray Assessment menu and select Assignment. I will go ahead and add in the assignment name, add in some instructions, scroll down to the grading area, enter the points associated with this assignment, and click the Add Rubric button. If I had already created a rubric, I can select that right here, or start from scratch, or create a new rubric based on an existing rubric. Other gradable items also have this rubric capability, so I'm going to switch over to the discussion board, create a forum, scroll down to the grading, and again, I now have my add rubric option. So far, I haven't created any rubrics, so I'm going to go to the gray control panel, which is located on the left-hand side below the red course menu. I'm going to first click on course tools, and from the expanded menu, select rubric. On this page, I'll go up to the gray Create Rubric button and enter a rubric name. This rubric was designed by Dr. Jeffrey Kwong in the College of Nursing at Rutgers University. One thing that you'll notice is that he has two different criteria, activity and content, and based on a five-point scale from excellent to unsatisfactory. What we're going to do is replicate this same rubric in the Blackboard environment I'm going to scroll down a little bit down to the rubric detail area. And this default rubric has three criteria, formatting, organization, and grammar, and three different levels of achievement, novice, competent, and proficient. This is very different from the rubric that Dr. Kwong has developed, but we can adjust it as needed. So the first thing that I'm going to notice is that I only need two criteria. So I'm going to come down to grammar, Click on the menu option and select delete this row. You'll notice we have the three different levels of achievement and we need five. So I'm going to go up to the add column option and click twice. All of these labels and headings can be adjusted. So I'm going to go to the formatting one and select the edit option to change that one to activity. Likewise, I'll change organization to content. Across the top, we're using a five-point scale, and you'll notice we've got percentages that are here defaulting. But up at the top, I can switch that to points here. You'll also notice that I can actually use a point range. So if that makes more sense for your grading, please go ahead and change that to point range. So now I'll change novice to excellent, competent to good, efficient to fair, and now the two new ones. And now the points and descriptions. Again, I'm simply going to the Word document, selecting the text there, and pasting into Blackboard. If I need to reorder any of my criteria, I have a menu option up here that will allow me to move them around as needed. Once your rubric is all set, go ahead and click at the Submit button at the bottom right or top right. 
your rubric is now ready to be used and attached to any gradable item. If you know you have a similar rubric, I'm going to go over to the menu option. And here I have the option to copy this rubric. You'll notice it's named with copy of basic discussion, and I can go back in and make any edits as needed. I don't actually need this, so I can come over here and delete. Rubrics can be assigned through the Grade Center as well as any of the gradable areas other than Safe Assignment. In this case, it's a discussion board. So I'm going to go first to Discussion Board and into the options for Unit 1. Scroll down to the Grade Area. Select my rubric. And click Submit. When I first created this discussion board, I had set it to five points. My rubric is designed on a 10 point scale, so it's actually letting me know that it's going to adjust my maximum points. You'll notice that by default, the rubric is not visible to students. Well, part of the advantage of using rubrics is that your students know exactly what to expect and how they're going to be graded. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select one of the yes options. I also like the fact that you can show the students the rubric with or without the scores. And click Submit. Now that I'm ready to grade the discussion board, I'm going to first go to the Grade Center and either use my Needs Grading option or my Full Grade Center. Here I can see that Rutgers 1 has already posted to the discussion board and is now waiting for grading. I'm going to go into that option, and here I can see the post that the student created in this forum. This grading page pulls up a list of all the students' postings. In this case, it's only one, but I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit Grade. Here I have the overall grade, as well as feedback and grading notes if needed, but I want to go ahead and use the entire rubric. So I'm going to click on this button over here, and here's my rubric. This student gets a 4 for activity. I have the option to enter feedback if needed, and content was a 5. Once the rubric has been completed, I can scroll down. Here I have the option to override the automatic scoring. So I gave the student a 4 and a 5. They're both weighted equally, so we've got 9 points out of 10. But if necessary, I can go ahead and increase or decrease that grade. Here I also have the feedback option, but I'm going to go ahead and click Save. That saved the information on the overall rubric, but it's important to do one last save grade. I can return to the grade at any point to make adjustments. By clicking Edit Grade, I have access to the overall grade, but I can also go back into the rubric itself and make adjustments as needed. In order to make grading faster, you can actually select an entire column worth of levels. So in this case, I'm going to click on Excellent, and you'll see that Excellent has been chosen for each of the criteria. And again, if I need to make adjustments for a particular criteria, I can go ahead and do that. In this example with the discussion board, I assigned the rubric through the discussion board tool. But a rubric can be assigned to any gradable item. So I'm going back to the full grade center, and here I have a column for my class presentation. I'm going to click on that option, go into edit column information, scroll down to the grading area, and assign a rubric here. Again, the default is that the students are not seeing the rubric, but I can switch that. Now that the rubric is associated with that assessment, I can access it from the View Rubric button. Thank you for joining us in this webinar, and if you have any questions at all, please contact the Office of Academic Technology.